You're probably feeling a range of emotions at the moment. There's no right or wrong way to respond to a diagnosis of ovarian cancer. But after many years of talking to women and their families, we know that there are some helpful things you can do soon after diagnosis to make it feel less overwhelming. I think it's very important that you tell your friends, you take the time to tell them what's happening, where you're at, um, and most of them will just say, how can I help? And really all you want is for them to be there and to ring you from time to time. When we're talking about diagnosing ovarian cancers, women often come along with a large ovarian cyst and we are not certain at the time of surgery whether this is going to turn out to be a cancer or something that's benign. So you have to talk to women beforehand about what's possibly going to be involved at the time of surgery. We would plan to do this sort of procedure in a setting where we have the availability of expert pathologists on hand during the surgery so we can actually send the ovarian cyst down for an assessment at the time of the operation and find out whether there is actually a cancer present within it. And if there is, the plan would then be to make sure there's been no spread from that ovarian cancer into any of the other tissues. When I was first diagnosed, I was completely shocked because I, I didn't expect it to be something serious. I, I went and did a little um, exploratory operation just to find out why I wasn't falling pregnant because I'd been doing IVF for some time. And the doctor found something and he didn't know what it was. I, the next day I went into the oncologist and he told me that what, it was two tumours on my ovaries. One was pre-malignant and the other one was malignant. And I just sat for a second, tick, 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 I've got cancer. I just couldn't believe it. Normally, if you do find an ovarian cancer, the next step is to look at the other ovary because that's a common site of spread. The ovary has a very fine surface on it and it's very common for cancer to come through that surface and spread out into the cavity of the abdomen and we would look all the way through the abdominal cavity for any signs of cancer spread anywhere else. My name's Sandra and this is my husband Jeff and I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer almost two years ago. You're going along quite happily and suddenly get this news that your wife's really sick and you think, wow, what, how do we deal with this? Your brain's going in a zillion different directions trying to, to process a lot of information. And she looks fine and how can Santa be sick? Why didn't she know all the <laughs> symptoms? Yeah. She works in this sort of area yet didn't recognise why did it take so long? And you realise that ovarian cancer the symptoms are so vague that even people who work in the medical area don't necessarily uh, pick up on it. Um, as quickly as you would, might expect. Unfortunately, there are no conclusive reasons why women develop ovarian cancer. There are some thoughts behind it, and we do know that women who are of Ashkenazic Jewish background um, do have a higher risk of developing ovarian cancer. Some other risk factors are having few or no full-term pregnancies, having not used oral contraceptive at all um, during their life, also diet and nutrition play a big important part and we do know smoking is a cause of uh, various types of cancers. The average age that we see women develop ovarian cancer is around 60 um, but we do know that women younger than that can develop ovarian cancer as well. We do know that women who do have uh, a family history of ovarian cancer do possibly have a higher risk of developing ovarian cancer themselves. Um, they can visit a genetics counsellor um, who can then sit down and talk through the processes of genetic mapping um, in accordance with their family history and see what their risk factors might be. My name's Megan. I was 29 years of age when I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. I was diagnosed with a non-hereditary form of ovarian cancer. Being diagnosed with cancer at 29 was, um, was a scary thing. It wasn't obviously um, something that I was aware of, that people even got cancer at 29 years of age, let alone ovarian cancer. Um, my journey through my medical battle with cancer was a lonely one. There were um, a lot of people a lot older than me on the cancer wards. So from that point of view, um, I did crave people of my own age to talk to who had been through similar circumstances. Learning more about ovarian cancer is empowering. It helps you know what to expect and to relieve some of your anxiety and helps you to become an active partner in your journey.